Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello there, thank you for joining me. I'm going to be doing another show from my childhood. The Six Million Dollar Man. This show ran from 1973, I believe, to 1978. In 1976, they spawned a spinoff, The Bionic Woman, and I love them both. It was based off a novel by Martin Caden called Cyborg, and I believe he did two or three more books in that line. The show was going to be geared towards a cyborg James Bond, but it kind of progressed into a more down-to-earth astronaut who was more reluctant. And from what I believe Lee Major says, who plays Steve Austin, they felt that the, the character didn't like spying. In any sense, it started with like three movies for TV, and then the series started. I have been a fan of the show forever. It's so important to me in my youth. However, unlike, I don't know which one I'll release first, but I have a Starsky and Hutch one. This one I can see critically not being so well accepted now. So I think what gets me and what still gets me to this day is the opening of the show. I think it is one of the best ever. And what I mean by that is you see this crash, um, which I think is based on a real type of test pilot astronaut test. And you hear a little bit of Lee Majors. Uh, I think he's actually saying uh, it's breaking up. She's breaking up and it's based on what a real test pilot and who got into an accident and tumbled six times. So it actually might even be real footage. Then you have, uh, you know, a voice that says Steve Austin, astronaut, a man barely alive. And then one of the actors on the show, Richard Anderson, who's great, he, you hear him say, gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. Steve Austin will be that man, better than he was before. Better, stronger, faster. Now, if you're a fan of the show, I get chills. Because I know what the music's starting now in my head. It was cut down and changed a little bit. But it still ended with better, stronger, faster, and it's going with the opening scene. It gets me to this day. The theme music gets me to this day. It got me, it gets me into the show. So there's a bias. I get right in. I don't care how lame the episode is or if he's fighting crappy robot looking people. Although I love the episodes with Bigfoot. Yes, there's a mechanical bionic Bigfoot and it's awesome. So the show goes more of a natural down to earth guy who's hired by an organization, secret organization, the OS, and he has his fairly basic doctor and his boss that put him on missions and like I said it was supposed to be more of a James Bond type thing but they took that gloss off it as it's described as and went for um, a different tone which I loved I mean I'm a kid I'm so into the show even in its reruns I've never given up on it but like I said before, I think if you look critically, it doesn't hold up as well. But I'll tell you what holds up fucking amazing. Not only the opening, but the slow-mo sound effects combined. I don't know what it is. They captured magic, and it became a cult phenomenon. It became part of culture. The opening, the phrasing, um, and then they show his body. You know, they replaced his right arm, both legs, and left eye. And then the bionic woman, she gets replaced the right arm, two legs, and one, I think her left ear, or both ears, I'm not sure. 
And it's just, when you watch it, the slow motion, the sound effects, it works. I don't know how slowing things down works, but he, if he's chasing a car and he's moving in slow motion, it just, I don't know how it works. It plays with my mind. Maybe certain people it works with, but it still holds up. I watched the show. I recognize some of the lame episodes in the seasons, um, but I like him as an actor in this. I liked him as an actor in general. Uh, Lindsay Wagner, who plays uh, Jamie Summers, the Bionic Woman, from all the side cast. Very well done. The episodes that work, work very well. But we're talking about, you know, bionics and getting into accents and replacing body parts, and it's $6 million. I think there's a thing in the article somewhere where it says what it's equivalent to. I think it's like uh, $35 million equivalent now, but, you know, they make a thing to show it's atomic power, and it's just amazing. Um, you can feel the actor's turmoil in the first episodes where he's saved from this terrible accident and he's got limbs he's not familiar with and at first they're not I don't even know if there is skin on them and it's just a tough thing to watch and he wants to just end it all in, in a sense and then he has to work through um, getting familiar with his body what his capabilities are and that thing runs through the show and his breakdowns let's say or, or dilemmas with um parts of his body and they do that with jamie summers the bionic woman who i think in the original two-part episode she's in they hint that she dies but maybe it was super so popular that they brought her back and gave her, her own show and they have an episode where i think steve austin has to go to the people who created bigfoot and get her like a serum because her body's rejecting the bionics. Anyway, I still get a kick out of the show, but I realize how some people won't try to watch get watch it and it won't work for them. I could I could understand that. For me, it just happened to be perfect timing. My imagination just went wild. Um, like I said, the opening theme, the narration, the footage they use, uh how they use slow motion and weird, seemingly crappy sound effects and how it works wonderfully is um, amazing to me. It's it's part of culture. It's uh, And like, again, like I talk about, I think with Starsky and Hutch, I, I was talking lunch boxes, dolls. I had all the outfits, I had his astronaut outfit, his jogging outfit, his uh, outfits that were, you know, everything I can get my hands on. And what was great about the doll was, this is amazing, okay? You had this doll, I don't know, um, let's say nine inches tall, whatever. And like, fashioned like the G.I. Joe dolls back in the day when they were bigger. And you had all these uniforms. It was done well. It was done really. And then you could roll down the skin of his arm. And you had panels of what was, what was under his arm. And you can do that for his legs, his arm, and this is the best one. You can look out, you can look to the back of his head through his eye, and it would increase your vision. I mean, this was fucking amazing. I loved everything about this show. Lunch boxes, you name it, every outfit, vehicles, like whatever they came up with. This was me running to City of Boggins. Um, you know, Battlestar Galactica at times and Buck Rogers and Transformers cartoons, listening to Kiss. And I think that all blends into my love of the show. And I try to keep a open mind when I say, watch this show. Like Starsky and Hutch, I would say, you know, no, anybody, everybody, watch the show. Maybe you're not getting into it, but you're going to recognize its heart and soul and you're going to uh, appreciate the good things about it. If I recommend, listen, just you got to watch the $6 million man. I can see people coming back and fucking with me. However, I would debate the opening scene, the narration, the music, the theme, uh, how they work 
the slow motion special effects are hands down amazing. Yes, some of the content of the show doesn't hold as well as like a Starscreen Hutch or a or Beretta. Um, you know, they, they've got tones that resonate more with cities and um, culture. You know, Six Million Dollar Man, they're, they're trying to make things interesting for him, whereas Big Onyx would be useful and some it doesn't resonate well with. Uh, I remember one episode, uh, I was telling my friend, he he knocks on, I think he's going into an office of some type. He knocks on the door, it's not open. He uses a bionic arm, his hand, and he, he opens the door, gets in, he's like shuffling around papers, you know, looking through files. And then a woman comes in and he's surprised and he's like, she's like, what are you doing in my office? And his back is to the door, his hands are up to his sides and he's like oh you know i'm not uh dangerous i'm just here looking for talk to someone he's like the door was locked and <laughs> they show his bionic hand arm um, at the elbow bend down unlock the door real quick and then come back up but he's not the flash and the woman goes what the fuck did you just do <laughs> yeah, she doesn't say fuck but you can get like she's like what was that? Like, I know you just did. It's like his behind the can so fast it can move so that she wasn't sure what happened. But anyway, he'll fight sometimes a tankish type device, and sometimes he's battling against his own body. In that there are problems with the nuclear or atomic um, parts and how it's interfacing with his body, which I'll make a reference to the bionic woman that came out uh, during the strike. Let's say two thousand six ish where they started the bionic woman they didn't start with the bionic man first and i loved it i was really into it but in that show what they did was they made it more plausible in that they had to give her nanobots i think i think it's nanobots that would reinforce the connective tissue across her body so what you would say is, you know, if you're trying to lift a car, you don't want your arm getting ripped out of its socket where it's connecting to the flesh. <laughs> you know, it's like, how much can you do with your legs before they detach from the, with how they connect to the flesh? So the bionic woman was already saying, well, we got the bionics, but we can also enhance the area. So what he would say is, your left arm is almost as strong as your bionic arm in, in, in you know, relative conditions like obviously she could probably do way more with the right arm but at least the left arm is enforced and her healing is enhanced which gives the impression that she could weaken the connective tissue and the nanobots are repair it and they reinforce her structure anyway they didn't do that with the old show so but they have great effects it just well great effects concerning him right the general show with the tanks and stuff like that crazy stuff and yeah, I think the show doesn't hold up as a um, a great look at the writing and stuff. Although I find some of the episodes compelling and really good. But it's just fun. I mean, the I don't know if they dated in real life, him and Lizzie Wagner, but the chemistry, the connection works. I transferred right over to the bionic woman and well, she had a dog, okay? They gave her a bionic fucking dog. I don't remember the circumstances of what, how the dog was created, but it was interesting. And she's like, what I think is my first love. Maybe I'll do a podcast on that, but it's, maybe I'll just connect it to this in some way. But, and she was my first crush, I think. Although my family says it's Dinah Shaw. And I don't, I know who she is and I remember her now, but I don't remember having an infatuation with her. But Lindsay Wagner was definitely one of the first. She's a dog and she's beautiful from the last time I can remember seeing her at any age, she's got that type of look. So the $6 million man, great sci-fi type show, just hell of a fun for me, even to go back with, although I try to recognize its faults, but it did so much at the time. Check it out if you want. The $6 million man or bionic man. And by the way, they did three TV movies like, from the 80s to the 90s and they got them married they had children 
So they would come back every once in a while and tie up things. And they were pretty good. They were okay. I don't remember them being outstanding or anything, but I know my bias. I know I'm a sucker for it. Take a chance. It's up to you. But when we got all this thing, all these things to worry about and we're stuck in our houses and trying to maintain our distance, sometimes these old shows are what we need or what I need. So I'll see you all next time, everybody. Be good.